Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Allie, and I am so glad to be here with you this morning on this homecoming Sunday. I'm also glad to be able to speak with you this morning. Um, I've been learning Jagus all week, so that's why I sound a little croaky and funny this morning. But at least I have a voice because God is so good. And all the time, God is good. Amen to that. We welcome you. We welcome those of you who are joining us online, whether that's on Facebook or on YouTube. And we welcome you to join us here in person anytime you are able and want to join us. With that, let us begin our worship with our call to worship. In this family of faith, we have the place where we will always belong. Here we will find the friends who will love us as children of the Most High. In this house of God, we worship a king who rules with equity. Wherever you are, and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let me see. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you for this uh, 2024 Wesley Chapel homecoming. I don't know exactly how many homecomings have been celebrated, but I know the church has been around for well over 200 years. Now, I wasn't here for the first homecoming. That might be up to the day. I don't know. I have uh, several announcements. The flowers up here were donated by Pam May, and the ones out in the best of you were uh, donated by Lil Davis, who's one of our neighbors down the road. Uh, so we appreciate that. Uh, Pastor Allie will be on vacation for June. 3rd to 16th. Uh, Vacation Bible School is coming up. It's starting this Wednesday. It'll be every Wednesday evening. That's uh, from 6 to 8. And the sandwich bar will be open at 5.45. I don't know if that's important. Uh, the uh, league team will meet on June the 11th. The book says 6 o'clock. I think that's supposed to be 7. So uh, June 11th at 7 o'clock. Does anyone else have an announcement? If not, go Just ahead. to follow up on Vacation Bible School, we've got all these wonderful kids here. We want you to come to the Surf Shack. It is a really cool place to be. And as you go to dinner, down to eat, if you want to go downstairs and keep, take a peek, you'll see the beautiful place we have for you. 530 registration, 545. Uh, the sandwich bar, the sandbar opens and you can come have a sandwich. And those of you who are saying, we're not here, would you do me a favor? Would you pray for us? Every Wednesday night during June, we need your prayers that those who are leading might so speak God's word and show God's love that our children will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Our first uh, hymn is the Church in the Wild one. I think it's going to be on the screen. Thank you. 
affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the midst of your come, just the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body,
face of the <coughs> day of reading the prayer of illumination. Come, Holy Spirit, give her life. Bring it to us so we may hear a word of truth this day. Draw us into the community. Enable us to love, inspire, and make us one with you. For the world is so deeply loved. Amen. We ask that you will stand for the reading of the gospel. Luke 15, 11 through 32. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pies that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. And I'm no longer worried to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatty calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost in his pain. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fat calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost in his family. Word of God for the people, God. Thanks be to God. You know, see, see. The idea of the prodigal son has re uh, the prodigal son returning home has been used in various forms and variations throughout the ages. One of my favorite versions, yes, versions, not retelling, is the Lion King. In this version, Simba, the young lion cub, is convinced by his uncle, uncle Scar to run away after the death of Simba's father, the king. And Simba makes a life for himself with his newfound friends, Timon and Puma. Until one day, years later, Nala, his childhood best friend, appears, and she convinces him to return home, where he is met with love and joy by everyone except his uncle's car, of course. We see the parallels, right? While Disney did not follow the story that Jesus told us, exactly, there are elements of this famous parable within the Lion King. <clears throat> we 
We do not know because Jesus did not tell us what made the younger son want to leave in the first place. Could it have been like for Simba that something happened and his older brother convinced him that he needed to leave? Or was he, as has always been my imagination, an adventurous spirit who wanted his own freedom and to travel and see the world? Either scenario is logical for his leaving. And reluctantly returning. In the second, he doesn't want to admit his reckless and foolish decisions. In the first, it could have been fear of a secret being discovered. Something that happened between the brothers, perhaps. If we take a step back from this story and what we are traditionally taught as the parable's translation, we see that it is a story of two brothers and their father. A story with many layers. While we do not know what happened to make the younger, the younger son want to leave, we do know that he had an older brother. We also know that throughout scripture, there are stories of sibling rivalries. Cain and Abel, Esau and Jacob, Joseph and all of his brothers. And we know that God did not, not love one brother or the other, more or less, because of their actions. We know that God loved all of the brothers. And the same with us and our siblings. We fight, we have disputes, we bicker. But in the end, we are all loved. And these two brothers clearly have their own issues too. And we could say that it is not a parable of one lost son but a parable, rather, of two lost sons. The younger, so, the younger son was lost physically. He left. He, he wasn't part of the family anymore. He took his inheritance and said, see ya. But the older son was lost emotionally. He stayed and worked with his father, but from his actions, we get a sense that this is more because of a sense of duty rather than a sense of love. And along with this sense of duty is a sense of jealousy, fear, and resentment all towards his younger brother for taking what was his younger brother's and leaving. These emotions seem to have consumed him through the years, hardening him to everyone. We cannot be hardened and rigid and have love towards God and our neighbors. If you noticed, I titled this sermon, You Can Come Back, not You Can Come Home. And this is because the older brother never left, but yet he needed to come back to the family, back to his father, back to his brother. He needed to move past those feelings of fear and resentment. He must move past his rejection of his brother and the actions of his father to accept and love him, to embrace his family, holding all of them up with honor. <clears throat> and are we not at times like both of these brothers? At times we want to take our forgiveness and run. We say, God, please forgive me of my sins. And God says, you're forgiven. We just take off. We want to do the things our way. We live frivolously. Just we don't think of other people. We put aside respect and boundaries to do what we want to do. 
to live for ourselves and not for others or for God. And then there are times that we are more like that older brother. We have feelings of resentment or jealousy when we see someone growing in their faith. Someone who we, for whatever reason, consider less than. We pull away from those who we deem as less worthy than ourselves or others who are called to be in the family of God or into various positions of ministry within that family. Do these feelings not drive the wedge between us and God? Verse 31 and 32 are basically the father saying, yes, my son, you have been here. You have your inheritance, but you don't have everything. You are not following my commandments to love. You are putting a divide between me and you, and a divide between you and your brother. How can you have all that is yours without love? Soften your hardened heart and accept. Is this not what God says to us too? Come back, accept what I have done, who I have called into the, this family, and love them. We can come back, no matter who we are or what we have done. God calls us to be at God's side. God offers us love and forgiveness. If the Father in this parable is able to forgive, accept, and love both of his sons, then imagine what a Father in heaven is able to do and is willing to do for each of us. And we come back. Yes, Jesus is calling for each of us to come back, to come home to God. And Jesus will lead us with our Father. We just take a little walk closer with Him. Amen. Eternal and loving God, today we give thanks to you for your goodness through all the years of worship and witness in this place. For your grace is calling us to be your people. For your love revealed to us in Christ your Son. For your gift of the Holy Spirit and joy of salvation, we give thanks to you, O oh God. For those who established this congregation, for their faith and vision, for their gifts and abilities, for all who have been members of this congregation, for those who have given freely their time and money, for those whose wisdom guided our congregation, we give you thanks, O oh God. For all who have preached and taught here, for all who have confessed here that Jesus is Lord, for all who have led in worship, witness, and service, we give you thanks, O oh God. Give us the assurance that we too belong to that great company, and that we too may find the peace that passes understanding. For we lift up those who have been named here this morning, those who might not be with us in a physical sense, but are here with us in spirit. Lord, we lift up our missionaries, our military, and their families, our country.
country and leaders, our church, our district, and our conference, our community, Karen and Angel, Richard and Phyllis Yost, AD and Mary Kay Young, Jean Womble, Jamie and Eugene Morris, Charles and Elaine Angel, Alan Sharp, Michael and Charlotte Staten and their family, Anna Staten, Mike Couch, the people of warring countries, Bossy Carlton, James McKissick, Jean Humphrey, Margaret Angel, the family of James Rose, and all of the unspoken requests that are on our hearts and on our minds, so that we know that you know what they are. Lord, we lift our prayers up to you, and through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We stand and join us in our closing hymn, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the gift of this place, the gift of your spirit. We thank you for the food that has been prepared and is before us. We ask that you bless it to the nourishment of our bodies and bless this time of fellowship to the nourishment of our souls. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.